There are three things that have to be there in the personality of our youth. Number one, they have to have the desire and the ability to be positive and to do something in the community. For example, speaking of desire and ability, to be successful in anything, in anything, in the school, as a doctor, as an engineer, a soccer player, in anything you do in this life, to be successful, you have to have two things. Desire to do something and the ability to do it. For example, I've always wanted to be a basketball. But as you can see, I'm too short to play basketball, so I was a failure in basketball. Then I found that soccer is my field. I'm taller than Maradona. And the youth, the brothers, Ahmed Ali and Abdul Rahman and all these guys uh, come and play soccer with me. I always send them home with tears in their eyes because they lose all the time. Rule number one, if you play with the Sheikh, you win. Rule number two, if you play against the Sheikh, you lose. <laughs> so this is the ability. I have the desire, but I don't have the ability. I couldn't do it. If you have the ability but you don't have the desire, you will not succeed. For example, most of our youth, they graduate from high school with A's in science and math. Of course, the parents, they want them to be doctors and engineers. But the youth doesn't want to be a doctor or engineer. He wants to be a soccer player, okay? Or a plumber. So they have the ability, but they don't have the desire. If you push them to take this field, they will fail. They will never succeed. Because they have one, they have the ability, the mathematical and the scientific ability, but they don't have the desire. They don't like it. So they will never succeed. You have to have both. The Prophet Sallallahu always looked for both in people, the desire and the ability. And this is why he got someone like Usama ibn Zayd to lead the Muslim army and fight against the Romans when Usama was what? 17 years old. Usama ibn Zayd, when he led the Muslim army at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu he was 17 years old. When the Prophet Sallallahu sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal to Yemen, Mu'adh was 20 years old. And remember all these numbers and the information I'm saying in the lecture because at the end, I'm going to be giving these prizes. There are five of them. <coughs> I have five minutes to finish, inshallah. And the Prophet Sallallahu didn't give leadership positions to some of the Sahaba because they were not qualified. They had the desire, but they didn't have the ability. The cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu himself, Al-Abbas, came asking for a leadership position and the Prophet Sallallahu said, sorry, I can't, you're not qualified. He had the desire, but he, doesn't, he didn't have the ability. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, sorry. And he gave it to someone who was 17 years old because he had both the desire and the ability. Number two, our youth, before they become leaders in the community and they play a positive role, they have to have education. You will not go anywhere. You will not succeed in anything unless you have good education. We all remember the great scholars of Islam, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Bukhari, Imam Ahmad, because of their knowledge, and there are kings and queens by thousands and hundreds who died in the, over the past centuries, we don't remember any of them. Because they only had, they were kings and rulers, but they didn't have the knowledge. We almost remember all the scholars of Islam. We name our kids after them because we like them, we know them. So knowledge gave them honor in this life and in the next life. Imam al-Bukhari and Imam al-Shafi'i, they were born orphans and they were very poor. So their moms had to work for them to provide for them and to help them get an education and they became what they became. Imam Shafi'i was a scholar and he started to give fatwa at the age of 12. Is there anyone here who is 12 years old? 13? Yes, Imam Shafi'i, stand up for me please. If you are 12 or 13 or 14 years old, stand up for me. Stand up. So Imam Shafi'i, mashallah, almost half of the people. So Imam Shafi'i was a mufti, he was a scholar giving fatwa when he was younger than you. 
Okay? So, desire and ability and education and good Islamic environment. If we don't teach our kids Islamic manners, we don't teach them nothing, man, nothing. We don't teach them how to pray, how to make salah, how to make wudu. How do you expect them to be angels if they are living with shayati every day and night? Nobody is teaching them anything. They have to have good Islamic environment. If you are not able to help them or teach them Islamic manners, at least give them CDs, man. Send them to the Islamic school or send them to the masjid. Because Allah will ask you on the day of judgment, your kids don't know how to pray. Why? Why? You were busy collecting money. And we'll ask the system, your daughter doesn't know how to pray. She doesn't even know Fatiha. You were busy your whole life cooking chicken sukkar and beef sukkar and baris and pasta and all that stuff. You didn't have five minutes to teach your daughter how to pray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for one single purpose. That is to worship Him. Now we do everything except for that one goal that we were created for. I'll give one example about Umar ibn Abdul Aziz radiallahu anhu. He became the Khalifa of the Muslim Ummah and he was the grandson of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. When Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was a youth, he was very young, 19 years old. His father was a ruler at that time. He got a teacher to take care of his son and teach him Islamic manners. So Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, one time, only one time, he was late for Salah. So the teacher came to him and said, why are you late for Salah? Why didn't you catch the Jama'ah with us? He said, my servant took a long time combing my hair. So this is why I came late. So the teacher sent an email or a fax or a letter or he threw a bottle with a letter in the ocean to the Khalifa and said, your son came late for the Salah because he was busy with his hair. So the Khalifa sent a line an email or a fax or a letter to the teacher in, with one line that says shave his hair, period. So he comes to Salah on time. The role of our youth in the community is very simple. One day, the little kids that we have in this room, those who are three years old or four years old or five years old, they will be tomorrow's teachers and presidents and governors and doctors and engineers, whether you like it or not. This is the reality and this is the nature of things. We have to make them qualified for that moment when it comes. We have to make them the leaders and the creators and also the, uh, the, the imams and the teachers of the future. We have to make them qualified for this. And I conclude with this. There is nothing wrong with our students and I mean, I'm talking about the youth, the young ones, there is nothing wrong if you become the rich, richest one in the community. There is nothing wrong if you have the biggest house in Edmonton. There is nothing wrong if you have the fanciest car in Edmonton. But you have to keep the balance between working for this life, but you also have to keep working for the next life too. So don't build your life in this life and destroy your life in the next life because the next life is the eternal one, the eternal one. So work for both lives, this one and the next life. Again, we need from the brothers and sisters here, the young ones, we need teachers, doctors, engineers, and we also need imams from this group and other young ones, and we also need da'is for Islam. You can make da'wah in your school, you can make da'wah if you're a doctor or engineer, by being successful in what you do. This is the best da'wah. Don't make da'wah by giving lectures to people. The best da'wah is you can do by your manners and by being successful. One brother, he is Hindu from India, came to me two years ago in South Carolina and he said he was in the Department of Engineering doing his PhD and he wanted to be a Muslim just like his Muslim colleagues at the school in the Department of Mechanical Engineering because they were very happy, they were very successful in their work so he wanted to be successful like them. So this is what you should do and finally we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good deeds and to forgive our sins and to help us do what is best for us in this life and in the best life to come inshallah. And I conclude with the questions if you allow me two minutes. 
So the first question, Usama ibn Zayd, when the Prophet Sallallahu appointed him the leader of the Muslim army, he was uh, how old when the Prophet Sallallahu appointed him? If you know the answer, raise your hand. Yes. 17. 17, come. Allah. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So select, so uh, take one of these. This is a video on Islam, Quran in Arabic, Quran Arabic and English, a booklet on Islam, Quran in English. Thank you. Mu'ad ibn Jabal, when the Prophet sent him to, to uh, Yemen as a judge, as a judge and a teacher, how old was he? The brother here. Okay. Yes, come. Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Pick one. Thank you. Mashallah. Imam Shafi'i, when he became a Mufti, how old was he? Raise your hand. We need a sister. Sister? Yes, this sister? 13? 13? No. Get this sister. 12? 22 years. 22, no. The brother, yes. No. Yes. Yes, mashallah. Mashallah, what was it? Asante. Mashallah. Why? Omar ibn Abdul Aziz was late for the salah. We need the brother from the back of the Kufi. Yes, you. His what? Come. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Musa. Salaam alaykum. Salaam alaykum. Allahu Akbar. The last, the last one. To be successful, you have to have two things: ability and what? The system. Desire. Allahu Akbar. Come. Allahu Akbar. I will give it to you. Okay. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Allahu Akbar. Thank you, Mr. Jason. Mahasamin and Abad Galil. Allahu Akbar.